Hello, my name is Clayton Waring, and we're here today at the site of the Geating Meeting House, here in the beautiful Blue Ridge Mountains of Maryland, along the banks of the Little Antietam Creek. As we're out here today, it's hard to imagine that at one time in the past, this was actually the western frontier of the country. This was just simply known as Indian Territory. But long in about the 1720s, these lands started to be divided up, and by the 1750s, a steady stream of settlers began to move into this area. And one of those was a family that goes by two separate names. Today, they're known as the Geatings and also the Keaties. It's essentially the same family, but when they came to America, there was in some sense this Americanization of the name, and the family sort of divided and took two separate names. We are here located just outside Keatiesville, and it's interesting to note that the town of Keatiesville is actually named after the same family as George Adam Geating's family. It's just two different versions of the same name. Moving through the country and moving through this area was this notion of this evangelical movement that was a big part of this new thinking or this new way of interacting and, and with God and new ways of worshiping. And one of the chief proponents of this new way of thinking, this new way of doing things in this particular area was a man by the name of George Adam Geating. And sometime following the Revolutionary War, George Adam Geating had a meeting house here, a church, where he tended to the spiritual needs of the community as best he could in the best ways that he could. From those very simple beginnings, a brand new denomination was formed, with George Adam Geating being one of the principal founders or one of the principal people that was involved in establishing that new denomination, which was referred to as the United Brethren in Christ Church. Many of the settlers that had come into this area brought with them their old ways and their old religions. For the Germans, that would have included things like Lutherans, uh, the Mennonites, and the German reforms. But these people, often these different denominations in this new country, somehow managed to come together and to form this new, uniquely American denomination called the United Brethren Christ Church. And this particular location has the particular distinction of being the very first church building that was dedicated for the sole purpose of that new denomination. But, of course, it wouldn't be the last. This new denomination would grow, and as the country moved west, this new denomination would go with it. New churches would be formed, new denominations would be formed, new congregations would be formed. Much of that history traces its roots all the way back to this one particular site and this one uh, meeting house that had been built by George Adam Geating. A division of this new denomination, actually in moving forward into history in 1968, was one of the principal denominations that was involved in the formation of the United Methodist Church. So if you're studying the history of the United Methodist Church and its origins and its beginnings, uh, and are interested in the communities which were responsible for that and the people that were responsible for that, this is one place you can come, you know, reflect upon that notion. You see a monument that was erected in 1907 in recognition of the importance of the site. Included on the monument are several of the initial bishops of the United Brethren in Christ Church. We see listed here Bishop Newcomer, whose home is located in nearby Boonesboro, and also Bishop John Russell, whose house is located in Keatesville, and he was laid to rest here in the cemetery. And here is the grave of Jacob Russell, who is believed to be the oldest gravesite here within the cemetery. That in nearby Frederick, between the years of 1760 and 1765, William Otterbein was in charge of the German Reformed Church over there. And there's actually records and documents that indicate that Jacob Russell and Otterbein had interactions during that period. Bishop Russell is a direct descendant of Jacob Russell. Bishop Russell's grave was relocated to a nearby modern cemetery and is no longer interred here. While many of the grave sites in the cemetery are marked with formal stones, there are occasions where the only markers for the stones are just a simple erected field stone. In this case, the person either chose not to have a formal gravestone or perhaps couldn't afford one. And here is the grave of George Adam Geating, who passed in 1812. He was returning from a visit with his good friend William Otterbein over in Baltimore when he fell ill on the way home and died somewhat unexpectedly. Also, a prominent feature of the cemetery is the stone wall that surrounds it. However, it is believed that the stone wall was actually erected when the site was abandoned and the church was moved to downtown Keatesville. The, the wall was put up to designate the cemetery and to protect it. The 
And unfortunately, time has actually claimed the original log Geating meeting house, which also doubled as a schoolhouse for a period of time. However, here we can see the flat place of land where the structure once stood. Eventually, as the congregation grew, they abandoned the original Geating meeting house and located a stone church here, which is known as the Mount Hebron Church, which is named after the road which runs past it. This church remained here from about 1847 to 1870, when this site was abandoned and the church moved to downtown Keatesville, where it continues to exist today as the Salem United Methodist Church. One interesting aspect of the United Brethren in Christ Church was their direct opposition to slavery. It's interesting to note that a traveler passing through this area in the 1850s noted that when he attended worship here, there were both whites and African Americans worshiping together at this structure. And here, I'm standing on what legend tells us, is the stepping stone. It's understood that these stones were erected in this particular manner so that people either getting off of their horses or out of their carriages had a simple way to step down onto the ground without having to reach as far. And behind me is the home of George Adam Geating. George Adam Geating is believed to have moved into this area as early as 1769 and remained here until his death in 1812. Behind me on this side is actually the original log cabin which was part of the property. But as the family grew, an addition was put onto this side of the house. So the initial beginnings of this house consist of the one window, the door, and the second window here. And then following that was the addition of a door and another window beyond. And George Adam Gating immigrated to this country from Germany. And some of that can actually be seen in the architecture here within the house. Typically, with English structures, the windows and the doors would be evenly spaced apart. But here we notice that there's an asymmetry in the placement of the doors and windows, which is very typical of German immigrants who built homes in this area of the time. And noticing the uneven placement of the doors and windows is we notice that if we do open the door, And in the case if there were shutters on this window and we were to open those shutters, we would have space for both the shutters and the storm door. Also of particular interest is the variable width on the siding. Traditional English homes, the widths of the boards on the siding would be evenly spaced. But here we see that it's variable width, which again is something that was common of German settlers to this area. And here we are at the back of the George Adam Keating House, and this is yet another addition to the structure. Originally, there would have been a summer kitchen in this location, but at some point, this stone addition was added to the structure. And we know it's a particularly old structure, or a particularly example of an early stone structure, in that the size of the stones are relatively small, meaning that a farmer and his family or neighbors and relatives would easily be able to hoist these stones into various locations. And here, we can see another side of the final addition that was added to the house with the two windows and the door. We can see different construction from the other side of the house and that we now have large lintels above the windows in contrast to the other side where smaller stones were used above the windows. You can see the presence of a log beam above the door to help support the structure above the entrance. Again, this is something we don't see on the other side of the house, which is an indication that they were built at different time periods. Inside the home, we can see the large colonial fireplace that was used by the family to prepare and heat its meals. You can imagine George Adam Keating and other members of the community and his congregation getting together to discuss things of interest to them that was going on in the area or going on with the congregation. And it's just interesting to realize that this was a working uh, farm and that there was a family living here and that they were dealing with many of the family events that most of us deal with today. Other interesting sites in the area include the home of Bishop John Russell, and in neighboring Boonesboro is the home of Bishop Kirst Newcomer. And although the home behind me is privately owned, visits and tours can be arranged by contacting the church.